Hey YouTube, today we're going to talk about setting up a Minecraft server using MinoS. MinoS is a simple Linux distribution, it's basically an operating system and it allows you to run your own Minecraft server. Of course there are other ways to do this and you can actually install this on a separate uh, PC if you have an extra one, but today we're going to try this method using a virtual machine uh, with completely free software. So the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and head over to the MinoS website. I'll include a link in the description. And just go ahead and download that file. While it's downloading, you can go ahead and head over to the uh, Oracle VM VirtualBox website. And I'll include the link for that one as well in the description. And you can start downloading that. And uh, once your installation's finished, then you can go ahead and install the Oracle VM software. Once you have everything downloaded, you're just going to want to open up the Oracle VM software. Go ahead and click that new tab up there in the middle. And now we are going to go ahead and set up our MinoS virtual machine. Uh, first thing is just to give it a name. We're going to give it MinoS2 as a name because I already have one down there that I was testing earlier. And then the machine folder can be particularly anywhere on your system you like. This is just where it's going to store the data for the virtual machine. Uh, I actually save mine in my secondary hard drive under a folder called VM stuff. That's just kind of where I put everything. But whatever works for you, it actually doesn't really matter too much. Just somewhere where you got the space. Next for type, we want to make sure that we select the uh, Linux. And then just scroll all the way down to the bottom and do other Linux, 64-bit. Now the next crucial step is to find the memory size that you'd like. Of course, I have 64 gigabytes of memory in my machine, so I could pretty much give this thing, you know, 32 gigabytes or more if I really wanted to, but you just have to decide what you're going to do with it. If you want just a couple of people, you know, on the server or, you know, uh, how many resources do you have to spare? We're going to go with 4 uh, gigabytes. And, you know, if you, if you think you, you may have more friends on, you can go more. So after we've selected our memory, we want to create a virtual hard disk now. And it's going to let us allocate the size. doesn't really matter. I usually do the dynamically allocated because if I need more, you know, it will try to give it to it. But we're going to go with 32 gigabytes for now. That's plenty enough for the MinoS operating system. and gives us some extra room to store some backups and stuff like that if we want to. So after we finish that, we're not quite ready to start up our, uh, you know, our instance here. We actually want to go over to the settings tab. Once you're in the settings tab, you're just going to want to go down to the second option for system. Go over to processor and allocate how many processor cores you think you'll need for your server. By default, it's going to use one. We are actually going to give it two, and of course, depending on your system, you can give it even more than that if you'd like. So after you've done that, you just want to go down to the network tab. Now we need to make sure that we're on the same network uh, as the rest of our devices. So you just want to make sure your network adapter is, adapter is enabled, select bridge adapter, and then choose whatever way you connect to the internet, whether you're Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Now you're ready to start up the virtual machine. Basically, you just uh, want to choose your installation disk, which will be the MinoS ISO you installed. Just run through everything. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I'm going to speed this process up a little bit, but you can kind of watch the options I check, and you can see that I choose a password for the actual administration of the MinoS. You can choose to get, have it give you email notifications too if you'd like, but we're going to skip that for this step. Once your machine is up and running, you'll be presented with a little bit of information there. It'll tell you that your, um, you know, your MinoS web UI. You just want to go down to the advanced menu, go to network, and go to static, and then set whatever IP address on your range that you like. You can choose to keep the one that it's chosen by default, but I like to make it static. That way the IP address doesn't change and then I have trouble finding my server later. Once you've finished that step, you're ready to log on to the web UI. Just open your favorite browser, go to the top, type HTTPS, that IP address that you've chosen, which in our case we do 192.168.1.199, and then make sure to do the 
port 8443. Once you've done that, it'll take you to the web interface. The default login name is root, and the password is the one you chose during your installation. So make sure you write that down or pick something you can remember. After we've finished those steps and we're logged in, we just want to go and set up our server. I'm just gonna call mine my test server, and as you can see, you can't use spaces. You have to put underscores. After that, you're gonna go ahead and save that, set it up how you like, and then go over to profiles. You need to make sure to download the um, Minecraft uh, version that you like to run. You can use the official releases, you can use the snapshots, you even have like Forge and, and Bucket and, and just different ones, whatever you want to pick. After you've done that, you can go to pick the JAR that you've just chosen, the version that you want to run, start up the server, and then after that, you can open up your Minecraft and just make sure that you pick the version that you picked for your server, and then load it up and then go to multiplayer. Uh, as you can see, I turned on the broadcast LAN option in the server, but it, it didn't actually find it. So in that, if it doesn't find it automatically, you can just go to add a server and then you put the server name and then the IP that you chose earlier. Once you do that, launch up your server and then do whatever you want. Build, you know, have fun. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.